Greetings, this is Moo 72A. And today is all things Carrillo, but I think it's also by extension Mexico. Um, this is uh, sort of what's become a, um, a sharper lens on the Mexican contributions to microtonality, um, sort of independently of the United States. Uh, and and to some degree, both uh, New Hemisphere locations dealt with Europe in terms of inheritance and in terms of what they decided not to do. And so with that beginning, I turn it over to my dear friend, Angel Blanco. How are you, my friends? Very good. <laughs> Very good. John Chalmers. Yes, yes. Good to see you again. Good to see you again, my friend. Thank you, Johnny. Santiago Chavez Navarro, welcome, sir. Always a pleasure. Hello, Angel. Costa, Monzo, Jonathan. Thank you. Vito, of course. Is that Anton Robner? No, that's uh, Ilya. Ilya. Oh, okay. He's in. Uh, he's in Armenia now. Armenian. Okay. No, it's from Russia in Armenia. But in Armenia, okay, okay. So, uh, well, welcome, welcome all. Uh, thank you, Johnny, for this opportunity. Um, what I, what I've been discussing with Vitold is maybe what we could do is uh, I could go for half an hour about the Carrillo stuff, and then the the other half an hour I'll turn it to Santiago, so he can go to the Novaro stuff. And his software is that okay? Yeah. Absolutely okay. Very good. Yes. Do you I don't need so much time. You can take more time if you want. Oh, so it's okay. It's, it's, it's I think half and half is, is all right because it's amazing that now we get to talk about Carrillo Novato at the same time. It's, I I feel really it's really cool. It's really cool. And Santiago, thank you again for being here. And you know, for those uh, who don't know, Santiago Chavez Novato is a relative of the great Augusto. So all questions regarding family and all the legends, there is a man for you. So, um, okay, let's start with, uh, I'm gonna share with you guys in the chat box, a PDF document that I made. Just, um, just let me grab it here. Vito, you, you have it, right? Yes, I do. Okay, let me let me grab it here and uh, hopefully it works. Um, it's a compilation that I did from uh, some Carillo books here and there, even some some in English from New York. Um, can I see Johnny? Okay, so uh, this. So you let me know when you have it, please. I really recommend for all of you to download it because I'll be using it a lot. Okay, so we have it. Okay, so let's open. And uh, Vitol, can you please uh, open it and, and, and share it, like uh, in, on the screen or, or Johnny? I don't have apparently. Johnny, I just forwarded it to you. I'm currently not. I'm currently not able to to, to do screen share, but Johnny, I sent you on Messenger this PDF. Okay. Let's see if we can use that. So, so check there and, or maybe I could I could screen share, right? Of course. Yeah, sure, do that. Okay. Uh, what do you prefer, Johnny? I prefer seeing it. Sure. Hold on, I have it. Hold on one second. Oh, okay, you have it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to share screen. Oh. All right. So thank you, Johnny. I'll be so as you can see right there, uh, it's a bunch of, of uh, books. 
and I'm taking pretty much the three, I wouldn't say most important ones. Just go to the top, please, Johnny. Like right there, this is the English version of the writing system, the notation system one. As you can see, it's 1925 from New York. Okay, then scroll it down, please, a little bit. There's the French version. Uh-huh. Uh then uh, scroll down, please. Okay, so that one is really important. It's the, the infinite of uh, in scales and chords. And scroll down, please. And that's like the one, like the Metamorphosis book. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start explaining a little bit. I decided to divide this this really brief uh, uh, um, lecture, I would say, in in um, three partita, like three parts. Like the first the first one is um, I I don't see the document anymore. No, I just went back to the group. You still need to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be using all all, all along, please. Okay. So uh, I decided to divide it between the writing system, which is a uh, uh, numerical, um, then the infinite, and then the metamorphosis. So because I cannot, I cannot cover the infinite and the metamorphosis without, you know, going first to the writing system. So uh, does everybody know that Carrillo? use numeric systems right yeah. all of you all of you know yeah so is, is anyone who doesn't know about the numerical system at all yes santiago oh mike is off the microphone is cerrado. no i I don't I don't know precisely what you mean. Maybe oh. you can explain it to me. Sure, by all means. So uh I guess for the rest of you guys, if you already know it, it will be like uh you know just just rechecking it out. So as you can see, Santiago, right there in the right where, where the uh just scroll it down a little bit, Johnny, please. Where the piano is, like the piano diagram. No, no, not go up. Sure. <laughs> just a little bit, just right right there where the piano is. Uh, go go up. Where the right there, right there. Thank you, thank you, Johnny. So right there, as you can see, Santiago, that's a traditional keyboard, and so Carrillo is assigning a number, or I should say a digit, to every key. Correct. Yeah. So mm -hmm. pretty much, if you're familiar with uh, 1950s or even 1960s music of uh, Milton Babbitt or, or some of those guys they also use this the system so anyhow uh pretty much what you can see right there uh, in this particular one carrillo is just just considering the uh traditional uh, chromatic scale so for do or for c is zero do the uh, c sharp one etc etc until 11 for b or c correct so that same system can be applied to any other uh, equal division of, of the octave or even the, the non-equal division of the octave. Like you can apply zero for the very first number of your scale, which you're going to be using in your, in your music. So you can use as many numbers as you want, and it, it will help you a lot instead of like dealing with the notes, okay? Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much it. If you continue going down, I don't know where Johnny is, but if you scroll it down a little bit, you'll find a bunch of uh, one page, Johnny, please. Right there, you can actually see, thank you, the uh, equivalence of the Carrillo system and the traditional one, okay? And in all the different heights, okay? Like really, really, really low, until uh, it is really, really uh, high. Continue down, please, Johnny. Yeah, exactly. So all of that, okay? I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with it because it's, it's pretty much uh, 
uh, pretty straightforward, as you can see, and, and you have the document now. So how are you going to be writing uh, the different uh, rhythmics? Uh, scroll it down a little bit, Johnny, please. Right there. So you can tell from exercise 27, where it says there is the same rhythmic values as the traditional ones. Okay, so Carrillo kept the same. All right. Does anybody else have a question so far? So, so far, so good. Okay, so scrolling down, Johnny, please. So right there, for example, we can see how chords can be built, okay, according to the to the system. In that particular example, uh, Carrillo is, is, is again is using just the uh, the chromatic uh, system, um, twelve EDO. So uh, scroll it down, please. Okay, a little, uh, yeah, in, in English, a little more, please. Scrolling down. Yeah, so right there, for example, thank you, Yoni. Right there, you can see how are you going to write down chords which exceed, the intervals exceed one or, or more octaves in between, right? So that's that's definitely something really really special. It's gonna save you a lot of, uh, I would say, space in your uh, in your score. Okay. So continue, please, Johnny. So he has right there a bunch of uh, examples, ones from Ravel, Maurice Ravel, and you can see how the writing system, at least to me is much more uh, clearer than the traditional one. It's uh, yeah, cleaner, I will say. And, 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 and clean, clean and clear, all right? Um, continue, please, Johnny. Right there, Schomburg, for example. Schomburg, traditional, and then in the Carrillo system, OK? So now that's all chromatic, chromatic stuff. Now, in the next example, we're going to see how you can apply it to, uh, oh, sorry, the, that's the orchestral score, Borjak. This is really important to mention something. Uh, continue, Johnny, please. Right there, you can see the same, the same uh, score, like the full orchestral score, and right there at, at the bottom of the page in, in that uh, Borjak one it's in French but I'm going to translate it for you guys it says like this this example uh, uh, fulfills the law of the 13th sound that it says what we hear is what is written so Carrillo is cancelling the notation for transposing instruments, as you can see in the original Borjak score. So um, it's, it's kind of like easier. And for example, in this particular case, which is again the chromatic scale, zero will always be Do, and one will always be C sharp, etc., 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 for all the instruments. So you, he, don't, he didn't write different uh, transposition. Um, class okay so now you have the document and you can study more if, if interested now keep on going johnny please thank you so now now we are into more into the uh, the world of this uh, uh microtonal university which is how he wrote microtonal music uh in the score so right there tepepan tepepan is uh, uh for for voices and harp in uh, in 16th of 16th of tone 96 edo so as you can see he designed the scale going from 0 to 95 so he can he could have like the the 96 pitches of the octave okay can, can you see it right there, like how, how he's uh, writing like 92, 32, 80, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Is it clear for, for all of you guys? Oh. 
Ok, right there, boca cerrada means boca cusa. So, uh, I think it's, it's, it's really fascinating whenever, if you are uh, using a, a traditional score. Next one right there, yeah, the concertino, which, uh, as it says right there, it was premiered in Carnegie Hall. And then in the, the Academy of Music in, in, from Philadelphia by Leopold Stokowski, of course, his friend. So in the fourth bar, you can see, for example, right there on the, on the, on the first violin, you can see 092, 092, 092, etc. That meaning that he was going in between what we call Do and a little bit uh, um, a quarter um before before though okay so uh the harp 64 68 72 etc 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 the guitar etc so he was really fascinated with his writing system because he thought that everything everything could be possible with it we're talking about 1927 okay so long time ago of course uh, keep on going, Johnny, please. Yeah, look at that. That's the concerto cello in, in uh, quarters, eighths, and uh, sixteenths of tone. Okay. Any questions so far? Uh, I have a question about how you could be a 96th of a tone on a guitar. That's a very good question. Uh, you could technically it's, it's extremely difficult to play uh you can tune the guitar especially also but in that case in carrillo never never composed uh music for for 96 cdo on the guitar he used the guitar on that ensemble but the guitar is not playing 96 cdo the guitar is playing quarters now you will say well how come you know it says the composition is for 16 because he said, okay, with this writing system of 96 EDO, I could incorporate already quarters and octaves. No. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you could you could do that. Yeah, that's yeah. why. Uh -huh. uh, exactly. Otherwise, like what, what you could do also is like, okay, if I'm gonna write for the guitar, I will use just the quarter tone from you know zero to twenty-three, and then the harp zero to ninety-five, etc. So he kind of like sim simplified the writing of, of that particular piece. But now, for example, if I'm going to play one of Johnny's pieces in 128 or a Novaro piece, which is completely different, I will still use the, 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 the career writing system. Actually, the prelude that I recorded from Augusto Novaro, I translated it to the 13 sound notation system because I'm much more comfortable with it myself. I even I even use it for my own standard uh, repertoire, you know, Paganini, Bach, etc. Even Leo Brower. So uh, it's, it's just a matter of of uh, getting used to it, and that's it. Like you don't have to love it or you don't have to accept it, but it's it's right there. So if anybody is interested in having the full uh, book, which is right here, like the whole book. I could, you know, send it to you uh, via PDF or something. Okay. Yes, John. Yes, John. Uh, I just wanted to say a short thing. Uh, a woman at UCSD, Patricia Smith, some years ago, actually transcribed Tepe Pond back into normal notation. So uh, you can see that it's in her uh, dissertation. That's amazing. Yes. So, uh, you know, uh, if John, if you ever want to produce it, I'll, uh, I'll Xerox and send you the score. Although, I agree with Bong Hill. It's probably easier to read it in the 96 tone uh, numeric notation. Um, yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I mean, uh, uh, um, it's it's kind of like normal that that most of the people do not know about this system, of course. So, uh, in order for the Carrillo music to be played more, it will be actually translated, as you mentioned, to the to the standard one. But it's, this is just like uh, something really interesting that is is coming back. Like I actually, this has nothing to do with the precisely the conference, but I'm just gonna mention it. Oxford University, like a year or two years ago, and probably Harvard did too. They were mentioning about the uh, 
decolonization of music. And so how they were thinking about getting getting rid of the traditional system of the treble clef and all that stuff. Not exactly getting rid like cut, but like giving giving a chance to other systems, the, the Arabic, even the the, uh, the Amerindian system or and other 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 systems, Chinese, etc. So uh, the the one that I wanna I wanna talk to uh, with Oxford and Harvard is this one, because the goal of Carrillo was precisely that is not exactly like decolonization per se, but something that could be much more universal and really important, something that will be super easy for kids to learn. Like a kid in one day can read and write music with the system. Okay. And with the other one, it will take forever. Yes, Joseph Monso. I just I wanted to mention something that Jonathan is very familiar with. I've been uh, working with him on transcribing some Ivor Derrick scores to make music notation, you know, uh, in Muse score to make scores of them so the world can hear them. And the one that I've just been recently working on is Colorless Green Ideas Sleep Furiously, which he wrote in 22 EDO mostly. It has two electric guitars that are refretted to 22, and then it has two slide guitars. And Jonathan complained to me the other day about how I was complaining because Ivor Darig said that he he wrote many times that the notation of 22 is problematic. He put it in quotes. OK, um, I mean, I'm putting it in quotes because uh, it doesn't work the same way as mo most of what we're familiar with. So like first Darig explored quarter tones, which is fairly straightforward you just put a note in between the regular 12 and then he explored 19 and 31 which are also both mean tones so they can use the standard notation but 22 is different and he even says perhaps the best solution is Carrillo's idea of just using the numbers for the <laughs> notation and yeah. I wish he had for that score because he didn't he put what he called in quotes the nearest quarter tone that's how he I notated it but he didn't do it systematically and it's really difficult to figure out exactly what he meant so uh, he, i wish he, he had using, used it uh, was hmm? using the cooper notation he used the cooper slash vishnagradsky quarter tone notation yeah i mean it was it's based on vishnagradsky's notation and milton right. cooper made i right. think one alteration to it so yeah yeah but it's it's a fairly standardized quarter tone notation but it's difficult to understand what 22 degree he meant by it because they don't match you know so if he had used carrillo there would be no problem at all it would have been simple you know I, I wonder if a better word than notation is symbology symbology yeah, yeah. take it away from actually notes and you know the cultural aspect well, of it i think that's it, what Derek was doing he was symbolizing 22 yeah. in yes. 24. Well, that's what yeah. I'm saying. That's why I would right. call it symbology. Yeah, yeah. Right, especially, but it's been really, it's just been really difficult. I mean, the fact if that- If you see different interpretations of the same note, what we call notation, right? that becomes problematic. But if it's a symbology, right. then we don't right. have to say, well, we're reinterpreting. We're reading it right. differently. Mm -hmm. So that's it's, where the problems are coming from, I think. The, the, well, the 22 EDO in this particular piece is for refretted guitars, and they're supposed to be tuned in basically standard tuning, E, A, D, G, B, E, with the big major third between the G and the B. So what I've finally deduced after well, quite a bit of struggling with this is that if I just follow the E chords and the A chords mostly, then I can pretty much figure out what he meant. Because... By using, if you strictly adhere to the nearest quarter tone idea, then basing everything on E as the zero, you know, as one, one and as zero, he should not have used G or C sharp at all because in quarter tones, they fall exactly in between two of the 22 EDO pitches, but none of the 22 EDO pitches fall exactly in between the quarter tones. There's always right, but, a closest, but, Joe, but anyway. Joe, moving away from Dodd for a second. Right, I what just wanted I to just, mention Cabrillo. What if I just what if I just say now to I, I usually say Angel, but Anjo. What if I just say I'm old 
changing to these numbers to me seems hard. I'm used to something else. I would rather go with what I'm used to. By it's almost means. like it's almost like the language you grow up with. Mm -hmm. By all means, like um, if I may, uh, it, it it pretty much it doesn't matter what you use. Okay, and in the long run, it matters what we can hear, right? As as Carrie is saying. So if you are used to your own writing system or you prefer graphic notation, which I also love, like John Cage or Leo Brower's uh, Stockhouse and stuff, um, that's great, you know? Anything anything that can help. For example, even, and Santiago will, will uh, 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 continue with this idea, Augusto Novaro also had his own system okay which is is really interesting uh i don't use the navarro system because i don't, i still don't know it 100 percent, but it's really interesting i find it a little bit more difficult than the career one because it's kind of like similar to the one that we already know okay novaro he used if i may santiago i'm just gonna mention this quickly uh novaro he used like roman numerals instead of like um the um the treble and the bass clef or the c clef and all that stuff okay so uh, santiago will explain much more of that later i don't want to you know eat his own uh, uh, lecture but uh, i'm just mentioning so now continuing with this uh what i will say johnny is you could also use as you have done or, or julio julio strada from mexico he does a lot or um, uh, uh, what what what's, what's the, the the name of this famous composer from New York? The one for the furniture piece, Lamont Young. Lamont Young. Yes, right. yes, Lamont Young. Text, no. plain text, right? Yeah, it's all symbology. Okay, but this is why normally I don't want to speak about notation in Moo sessions because we will stay with it and never move from it. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, I'm appreciating that for Julian Carrillo, it's a major innovation. And then we're also talking just slightly philosophically about how to move between symbologies. And that's how I just want to frame it. Are there other concepts of Carrillo that you can impart to us independent of notation? Yes, by all means. Uh, um... So continuing in the document, please, Johnny, can you share it again, please? You can all see if you have it open in, in your own uh, computers uh, that after after the annotation stuff, I go straight into the uh, musical uh, infinitum, okay? So uh, right there, and Santiago is a mathematician, so he'll be thrilled about this how Carrillo developed his own harmonic system. Carrillo wrote one very extremely famous book. Actually, his bestseller is traditional harmony or classical harmony. Now, after that, he wrote this one, which is this like microtonal or contemporary stuff. And so he applies that formula of the, the, uh, the, uh, the law of proportions to notate how many how many scales or chords are possible with the different combinations in this particular book he is only working with the again with just with the chromatic scale that being said he he explains you can apply this to any other system with the same procedure it's just like if we start using thirds of tone or quarters or whatever 15 idio it will be, I don't know, 90 volumes of, of the book, just writing all the whole, all the scales, right? All the chords. So I think this is pretty much telling what's going on. Like how many combinations of two sounds in the fundamental position can you have 11? Then three is 55, four, 168, 330, 460, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now, um, he is saying in, in Spanish, I'll, I'm translating, of those fundamental scales, 2047, if you apply the uh, Ambrosian procedure, which is the, the modes, okay, 
uh, you will have 13,300 different modes. Okay, so it's just an example of, of how many uh, different uh, sources of inspiration you could have. Okay, so uh, continue, Johnny, please. So right there, he's he's uh, writing down the procedure how he did. Okay, which I'm pretty sure all of you, all, all of your composers, right? So all of you know that 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 jazz. Uh, how you know? How you're gonna uh, make different scales? Continue, please, please. Just just scroll it like, yeah. More, more, more. Yeah. Yeah, more please. Yeah. So right there, yeah, he's explaining how you're gonna develop each one of the scales. Okay, it's okay, Johnny. You can you can continue, please. It's just uh, it's really pretty straightforward all that mathematical stuff, and uh, you you all got the document right now. So right there, yeah, exactly. It's uh, eleven of two sounds. Per two equals 22, 330, uh, 3960, etc., 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 etc. So you have a lot of, of um, possible chords or um, scales, right? If you if you play them uh, melodically. So um, right there, there is a formula. Yes, continue, please. More, more. Yeah. It's just yeah. More, 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 more. Yeah. So he's explaining right there how, how how he's developing each of the scales. Okay. Yeah. So notice uh, square in, in in four voices, five voices, etc., 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 etc. Yeah. More, 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 please. Yeah. So yeah, five voices right there. And he even took the time to write it down, like every single one of them. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. More, more, please, Johnny. Yeah. Okay. So right there, uh, right there, Johnny, please. So in that uh, uh, type page, because he he didn't publish all of his books. So that one I got from the archives in in Potosi. Uh, he is ex explaining how you're going to apply the same procedure of getting the infinite of sounds, but for rhythm. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> for example, he's saying, how you going to, how you going to, uh, combine two values. So it's exactly the same. The procedure is exactly the same. I I'm translating that, that, that the one that we use for the, uh, simultaneous sounds with two values, it will be just two uh, combinations. With three, it will be six. With four, 24, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, if you guys continue, let me just open myself the document here. Johnny, scroll down, please. Yeah. So. Thank you. So right there, right there. Thank you. So a little bit go go up, Johnny, a bit. So now we're entering the realm. Thank you. We're entering the realm of the metamorphosis. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that song. Correct. Ta 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 the mariachi one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's saying, presentaré primero el modelo. He's, I'm going to introduce the, the model, which is a fragment of a popular dance in Mexico, el jarabe tapatio. Okay. So that's, uh, of course, the piano version of it. So he, how he me starts making metamorphosis out of it. So you can see in the next example, can you can you scroll down, Johnny, please? Right there. Thank you. How he switch? How he switch the same theme? Okay, without 
we, we are not getting into the microtonal realm still. He is trying to um, use all the possibilities within the, the uh, 12 EDO before getting into the uh, microtonal world. Okay. So keep on going, please, Johnny. All of those are different uh, metamorphoses of the same mariachi theme. More, 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 Johnny. It's like 60, 16 different metamorphoses out of it. Thank you. More. Yeah, and then he is mentioning right there. Thank you. He is mentioning right there the procedure that you're going to use in order to change the theme into the microtonal world. Like, for example, he's saying if you want to translate all that jazz into 96 EDO, that's the procedure to make. And, and he's writing the whole scale, as you can see, 0, 14, 28, 35, 49, ta, ta, ta. And then he's writing the whole, the rest of the permutations in different rows. Can you all see it? Right? So um, he's saying in, in, the, in total is 47 metamorphoses just for 96 EDO of just one of the, of the, of the scales. More, Johnny, please. Scroll down. Right there, yeah. 15 of tone. 14, etc., 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 etc. Okay, so he's gonna go on and on and on and on and on. Okay. And uh, yeah, pretty much that's about it. Uh, like, uh, 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 I don't want to. I don't want to keep on going because Santiago has to. He needs to continue. But um, that's pretty much like in a brief nutshell. That's the world of the thirteen sound per se. Is the thirteen sound is not just Carrillo. Is about a method of comp of composing, such as uh, Novaro is the same. Is when we think about the the natural system of music, which is the name of Novaro. It's not just about the music of Augusto Novaro or the student, Emiliano de Subeldia. No, no, no. It's much more than that, okay? Which uh, I'm letting my friend here, Santiago Chavez Novaro, continue to explain now the natural system of music. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Nice. It's very interesting to see the similarities, similarities between books of Carrillo and, and, and Novaro, they also print a lot of pages of numbers and numbers. That's a, a common thing to, to, to do in the past. Now we, who use computers all the time, use spreadsheets, which is the same thing, but uh, we do it in Excel. And the software I'm going to show you, it's a software that I made I'm mostly a mathematician and software developer. So I, I'm an amateur in music stuff, but uh, my readings of, of the books, the book and the different editions of the book of Augusto Novaro uh, were difficult to me in terms of hearing what he was saying in the book. So I write, uh, software so I can really understand the books and hear what uh, he was saying in, in, a, in a way that didn't imply to make a 15 tone equal tone guitar like Angel has done and all the that would be marvelous but to me it was uh, much more easy to use the MIDI uh, system in the computer and uh, some generators of tones and with a visual uh, uh, display. I want to share my screen so I can show you uh, what I mean. I don't know if you all see this uh, page. 
this is a web page behind it is a software but you can access it just by pointing your web browser to the web page that uh, angel would put in the chat maybe <laughs> thank you and when you enter the software you see this you can first i want to explain quickly the interface this is like uh, the fret, the I don't know how you say it, el brazo, la guitarra, the and uh, it co it it goes from one to two in the numbers uh, because fretboard. Yeah, the fretboard. So fretboard. it's the fretboard of uh, one octave of uh, a guitar. And you can make divisions on it. This uh, fretboard is uh, displayed here also in the circle. As it, we have it like this, and we join it together. So all octaves uh, show on the same circle. And then we can use many tools described in the book of Novaro to make scale uh using uh, various uh, easy to to understand uh, mathematical uh, operation similar to what uh, uh, carrillo uses permutation and combinations and so on uh, inverse of 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 uh, of numbers etc so first you have uh, arithmetic scales escalas arithmeticas and you can mm, make it make them uh, as long as you want. You can divide the fretboard in as many pieces, equal pieces as you like, and it would generate all the harmonics uh, over that uh, particular fretboard. And you you can see the numbers, you can export them, etc. But the, the good thing is that you can, if you, if you have a, a keyboard connected, you can play them. Uh, maybe you won't hear this because I have to share my... My audio like this. So this is a way to 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 add threads to the fretboard, and you can also add threads uh, in the geometric way, which would be to use uh, the equal equal uh, semitone uh, method. You can also use it in any number. So as we see, this would be the normal 12 equal tone. So you can play it also. And you can also combine maybe those two and hear them together see them together and in the circle and hear them together. You can change the octave. So you can also select and unselect a specific uh, a harmonic or geometric spread and also you can add any other uh, mathematical uh, serialization of this this circle which also is proposed by 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 augusto 
in his book, in his latest edition of the book, which I think that's really great that he has done all the, those calculations and, and even those instruments. For me, it's just programming numbers and making operations on the computer. It's much, much more easy to me to hear what, what that means in, uh, in, in terms of sound. So for example, I can create uh, a scale that looks very similar to the ones, ones we know, which we'll, we'll show here in, in green. But it's, for example, made of the powers of uh, 1817, the first uh, 11 powers of that. And that makes a beautiful sound. And you can play with that a lot. Uh, some of uh, the things that don't Novaro did, it's not developed much the, the, no, the, the notation or the symbolization of the music, but more, I think, to think it like uh, Luthier and maybe as a mathematician to, to, how, to how, how does that sound and play with that a lot. He made a lot of scales and instruments for those scales. And then he began to decide which, what, which ones were more interesting to him. Uh, playing, just to show you, maybe this is an, the, the 18th, 17th scale. can do all the kinds of combinations of that, see them visually. And of course, we can also point a specific uh, tunings, uh, a specific uh, range and points and hear them with an oscillator so we can explore uh, scale. That method and these buttons over here can uh, help us to add and create scales, and then it's very easy to, to reopen that uh, and some databases, uh, reopen databases of the scales were added to the software also. So we can hear, hear we can see here thousands of scales, particular scales, and we can select any one of them, I'm just showing one uh, randomly and show them uh, in the in the circle and also play it we can um, also uh, see this circle with an a non uh, logarithmic uh, i we know that uh, the the profound problem that uh, is is found in the creation of music is between these two circles two Mm, geometries, the, nat the natural geometry of harmonics and the human geometry of logarithmic of, of two uh, perception that we can show here. So this scale, this particular scale, it's heard by our, uh, by, heard by our, by our ears like this. So uh, we, we perceive much more equal jumps between the intervals. So everything is like trying to translate to visual and, and audio perceptive. Uh, the, math, the mathematical simple method that uses Novaro throughout his book, I think that's the, for me was uh, the thing, I think this software, would uh, Augusto would love this, this software to hear all his creations and his ideas quickly in a in a keyboard. Uh, sometimes it he took him uh, it took him years to hear one idea. No, 
So I think this is what I most love of, of this. Other cool stuff about mathematics is that we can do comparison between scales. So no matter what scale we are playing, we can calculate the Euclidean distance of this scale to any other of the same number of intervals. So we can show all the scales we know are there between the, the most similar one to the most uh, different one and all kind of cool stuff. There's more bots and, and configurations here, but I don't want to take too much time. But you can play with it and tell me if you like it. And of course, uh, as I, I have good, good connections with the developer, which is me, I can make changes and, and fix and, and add stuff if you like for, for us to play with, with this. Uh, maybe a mathematical too too mathematical approach but to me was the the real connection between mathematics and and microtonality that that got me really really interested in this stuff and then i began to to listen to music and to hear the marvelous stuff that was not uh, given to me because of my normal musical formation but that's more or less what I want to, to say. And please, Angel or anyone else want to comment on this and maybe have more to say about the book and, and, and Novaro and maybe some relations with, with Carrillo would be interesting. So thank you. Thank you. All. Yes. Yeah. So um, that's, that's really, really amazing, Santiago. Thank you. Thank you. It's really, really cool. Uh, just just to mention uh, a little bit um, before going into the software, if if any of you guys are interested in uh, composing with the uh, SNM, the Sistema Natural de la Música, SNM, that's the uh, the name of, of uh, Augusto Navarro's system. I really recommend you this book. Okay, is uh, is the manual, the manual. Okay, as an introduction of of to the to the system of Gusto Novaro by and maybe you remember her Leticia Varela the Novaro expert and so um, let me know if if you're interested and I'm ninety nine percent sure that that Leticia will not mind if I share it with you via PDF actually she uh, she said that she she will love to have this translated into English so you know more people can have access to it. And so it will be amazing to compose music with that book and um, Santiago's software at the same time. So you will have the SNM ready to go, and not only the SNM but other other systems as well as Santiago is showing us. Um, Johnny, are you there? Yes. Uh, I have one one question for you, Johnny. Do you think that one twenty eight could be could be added to the Santiago software right now? Why not? Do you want to do it, Santiago? He's, he, Johnny's had another, uh, his own system. Oh, I would love that. It would be amazing yeah, if, you do, really if, if we do yeah. it right now so everybody knows how. Yes, I mean, uh, it, what came to mind is um, this uh, Will Sonics that uh, uh, Marcus has come up with. And um, you know that was sort of similarly designed. Marcus it, Hobbs, yeah. yeah, yeah, Marcus Hobbs, because he he wanted to make what Irv Wilson's ideas uh, were on paper make a sound, so you can control it, you can hear it. Now he uses sine waves. I really think Santiago, your tone was really bad. well. He has Marcus has developed a a, a, a desktop plugin now. And so that's able to play your library. Uh, there's certain online synths and samplers that you can now translate the yeah. Wilson material into real orchestral or you know whatever sound. It also is um, very uh, nicely similar to Adam Wilson's uh, software called Entonal, which also uses the circle. It's a very similar GUI. I love the fact, Santiago, that you can you can juxtapose two tunings on top of each other. 
Right. And, you know, and why not make that one new new scale? You know, I love the idea of having 12 equal and kind of knowing where it stands in relation to any other yeah. system you import. Well My other question for Santiago was, can you do more than a 2-1 as the uh, interval of, a, yes. of, of division? It looks like yes. it's oh. the math is all the same, right? You just have a different yes. uh, wider... Uh, yes, uh, one of the boot buttons that I didn't show you, it does just that changing the, the 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 octave yes how hard is it to create your own scale rather than bringing in a scala file I, it's very easy mm -hmm. mm, to me do you just I type really in a list but more more people to to test it to tell me if it's really easy but mm -hmm. to me it's very easy because i can add uh, any tone in in any mathematical way that i know and and keep adding it also a series of that with n going to from zero to 20 and then make a a, a scale with with some formula uh, all of that is possible also uh, some mathematical symmetry <clears throat> everything about symmetry so so uh, there are many operations to invert and and to create other kinds of more subtle symmetry modifications of a scale creating new ones mm -hmm. uh, that's that's really interesting it the sound is very bad because of the technical possibility of make this a web page you don't have to download anything you don't have to do anything so that's that's only possible with the official uh midi general uh, midi mm -hmm. 90, 90s uh yeah open right. source midi so you can do it uh much but much better but uh what i'm working on is to um, to make that uh, possible to record what you play so then that recording you can put it in any kind of so sound. are you making it into an au or a vst3 so that, that would, it can that be, would used be possible, inside of a, but yeah. there's there's a lot of standardization that I'm not familiar with. So that that has been a, a hard job to 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 begin to standard standardize all of this. I did it uh, without knowing uh, any other software that did it. So then when I done it, when I have done it, I, <coughs> I knew many other ones, but uh, was too late. I, I I have already begun to to do it, but I I I like it because it's it's my lecture of of my my great uncle, so it's also symbolical to me. Yeah. Um, I just had a real quick question, similar to Stevens, and that is, do you have uh, Novaro's twelfth uh, roots of intervals like one point nine nine five or one point nine zero two or something? Those variations of uh, of twelve tone tuning that he talks about in one of his books, second of his books, and uh, I didn't see quickly easily how to do that, or also say I want to do the fifteenth root of three or something. I take it that easy. It's easy to do with your system. Uh, yeah. Self clear, or is it by talking too fast, or? Uh, Well, oh, sorry. So this seems like a Wi-Fi problem. Is it? Did did uh, Santiago? Did you hear the question? The last part. No. I, sorry. Uh, oh, all right. Uh, my question was: Novaro lists some variants of twelve-tone tuning, like the twelfth root of one point nine nine five or something. You, yes. uh, is that already is that already implemented in your system set of scales, or is it easy to do? It's easy to do, and some of them are implemented. Yes, and, okay. and added to the database. I do it slowly because uh, I I am I have more uh, ethno ethnomusicology uh, formation, so uh, I'm very interested in in adding. Uh, uh, traditional scales mm -hmm. that I I myself record or that I uh, get from recordings and and 
that's interesting to me and that also it can be done with the with the software and the help of easy to to get uh, tuning tuning apps in the in the, in the cell phone oh. so i'm i haven't uh, been ex uh, uh, avid though exhaustively i don't know how you say it but all of them yeah also uh, is it easy to do things like the 11th root of five over three or the seventh root of three halves these are scales that Navarro mentions and uh, hmm. yes yes they are very easy there's uh, uh, once in the, in the bottom place on the right you could add uh, formula so yeah. then if you if you know how to write that formula in the computer with this uh, kind of, mm, easy to me because i uh, i know it a lot but i think it's not too hard to to, to yeah. use the standard translation of mathematics to computer uh, right. typing but you type it in the computer way of reading that and use n as a variable uh, and then it, it 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 creates the the full scale. Yeah. Yes. So it's very easy. Yeah. Um, Santiago, if I can ask, I, you know, while I loved the, the timbre, and I loved hearing the the solidness of the beatings, um, if it's MIDI, it's a thousand twenty eight resolution. Right. So it's not actually. The beatings are not actually as accurate as you can get them. Yes, so of course. Is, is, is there an interest in getting a, a more uh, a sharper lens to to get it to be really exact, so that the math that that basically because you're a mathematician, it seems to me you are so neutral that you want everything covered, and that's wonderful because in other words, you you create the situation of there's more than you know that you need. So that's like you yeah, know, the way they made computers, you know, there's more space than you think you need, but you will eventually. So what can you do to make a different resolution than MIDI? It's a tough question and good question because uh, it has to do with the MIDI standard. There are uh, after MIDI uh, standards used now, and the resolution of of many many parts of the computer are now far beyond what MIDI can do in the eighties. But uh, would be hard to implement it in this particular software because of what I told you that it's uh, easy to grab. You you just point your web server to 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 a web page and then you're you're done. And I think that was, for me, one of the importance of, of this because it put it on the hands of any student and, and no, no specialist that, that should know. Maybe it's, it's complicated to, to tune all of that and download that software and understand what it's doing. And, and here you can quickly play. But it, this software uses... Uh, a background that can be translated to many other languages and platforms and eventually could be translated to some uh, some language and some platform that 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 could do that yes i have a I question imagine, oh I, I, jonathan just before we go to you just uh, just to finalize this uh, i mean maybe i'm overthinking it but if it's a thousand 24 resolution for MIDI rather than let's say the sense would be 1200. So we're really talking about a difference of what? One cent, you know, the math people here to help, help me out. <laughs> so is it one cent difference more than that or less than that? Those are the three categories. Is it, is it uh, well, in, in the background, the calculations are much more precise than that. It's it's the output that makes the right. problem, uh, right. no, no, only no, the no, output. No, but no. the my databases are like uh, twelve decimal points, which is like a million times 
more precise. Right. Than that's decimal. yours, though. So, that's yours. That's in the background. But when you go through the the, the MIDI standard with I don't make, I, I only use, uh, that that gets reduced to 102 to 128 values. So if, uh, if you're using if you're using MIDI tuning standard, like the system exclusive messages, that's capable of like 196,000 something EDO. Exactly. Yeah. So that's pretty accurate. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just a, a quick question. Um, it, if you're if you're using web audio though, um, can't you use uh, just frequency and hertz with your oscillators, which would be very accurate? Yes. And yes, is that uh, what you're doing for the output? I use I know I use that for a pointer that I show you that I can point in a specific oscillation. Mm -hmm. uh, I use uh, that, but that doesn't make a play more more like a playable sound to me. And the thing is, if you use MIDI, I show you one sound, but I have like uh, thousands of sounds that I can possibly use. Uh, so I can play it uh, with many, many voices, all MIDI standards, but uh, an oscillator would make uh, another layer of complexity to modify that, uh, that oscillation to, to make a lot of sound. It would be interesting and, and it's perfectly possible. I, I use it in, in the pointer, in, in the line that you can point and create the oscillation precisely. Okay. Jonathan? Yes. Um, I want, uh, this is a question for Angel. And uh, I'm wondering about uh, the development of Beyond Carrillo. Like uh, when I was in Mexico 40 years ago, I met uh, David Espejo and uh, Oscar Vargas, and they were building Carrillo type harps. And uh, a man that I worked with, uh, Pepe Estevane, has one of these harps that is basically a hundred tones from uh, 100 over 100 to 199 over 100. So it's based on har those very fine harmonics between that scale. And I wonder if you, if there's anybody else that's an offshoot of Carrillo or Navarro happening in Mexico at this time or during the last few years. Can you just repeat the last question? Uh, yes, is, is there, are there people that are taking Carrillo to another level? Okay. Yeah. Like uh, Oscar Vargas and David Espejo. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, well, there's, there's a lot of people working uh, uh, with the 13th sound and with the Novaro system now, for example, the uh, students right. of, of Leticia Varela, uh, she is actually after after the forum, and I want to congratulate all of you guys, and especially Johnny here, for for creating the opportunity to have the forum, the Novaro forum, uh, and, and Santiago, of course. Leticia told me that everybody was so enthusiastic in Sonora that they are restarting, rebooting the. Uh, the Navarro uh, camp, okay? Wonderful, wonderful. Camp. That's, that's wonderful. great. That's, that's great. great. And so, uh, yeah, and for us, as for the 13th sound, yeah, yeah, there's there's a bunch of guys who, who continue, they, they go to the Carrillo archives and are composing music for the metamorphosis uh, pianos and all that stuff. Um, I think that uh, as long as, you know, more more people is interested and and that like Santiago is pointing like with technology nowadays you can do many many things and you start mixing electronics and and microtonality there you have it like uh i wouldn't say that the 13th sound or the s and m are strict in in a realm that has to be this way like my way or the highway it's not exactly that i think it's, it's like like in the traditional music also uh you can follow your own path like even carrillo like you can in in the document that i shared you can read there somewhere that he's saying the student should pick his scale his or her own 
scale, the one that she or he loves the most. So isn't it that fantastic? Like he's he's not imposing, right? And Augusto Novaro is is so far. I, I'm not an expert on Novaro by any means, but so far of what I know, and Santiago will correct me here. Um, he is kind of like the same. He's he's saying that use my system, okay? But the system is so 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 huge, so amazing. The S and M that one guy, one person cannot cannot do it all. Okay, you will have to spend millions of years, literally, to um, exhaust it. So yes, in in, in the answer is yes. There are a okay. bunch of people. <laughs> All right, Tom. Um, we just wondered if there's a club or or something that uh, that shows who these people are. Do they get together? Is there? Uh, uh... Oh, okay. Well, uh, I will I will say that them are. Uh, kind of like in the same harmonic, they are not exactly like Turton Sound or Novaro guys. I will say that most of them are into the whole microtonal spectrum or or I will okay. say contemporary classical spectrum. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and I yeah. wanted to say one thing is that uh, we're, we're hoping to bring uh, Pepe Estevani with his 100 tone Carrillo harp to San Diego uh, this next April, we're having a show which uh, John Chalmers and uh, um, Joe Monzo and I and a few others are putting together, and uh, we're uh, we're working on it. April fifteenth. April, may, may, maybe I'll meet you in San Diego, next, California. Next. I might be there. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll we'll uh, put the uh, information up on the uh, Mew website. All right. Yes, John. I had one quick question. Can you uh, post the information by which one can order Letitia's book? And how do you pay it? Do you send a money, postal money order or just a check for $20 or something? To... This particular book, I think, is out of print. Oh, this one. okay. So no worries. If you want it, I'll yeah. share the PDF with you. And uh, okay. I, I'll, ask, I'll ask Letitia, Letitia but I'm 100% yeah. positive she will say, by all means. Okay. Yes. Sign, right? me up. sign me up for that. Yeah, sign everybody up. <laughs> all right. Yeah. yeah, by all means. Uh uh it's in Spanish though, huh? I can read Spanish. Está bien. Está bien. I don't speak it, but I can read it. <laughs> no, hay, no hay problema. No problema. Is all right. Yeah. No problem. It's Why worth no? mentioning. Right. Translating now is easier than it's ever been. You don't need a translator. All you need is a digitized version of the text. EPL, yes. You can easily make enough of a change automatically, AI, so that anybody in the field can see quickly what needs to be fixed. It's, so it's a real easy process. I've done it with German. So I hope, I mean, and, and I know Witold is trying to do it from English to Polish right now. Oh, God. So, you know, it's going to be yeah, different yeah, in exactly. different languages, but could you ask <laughs> Letitia, maybe she has the whole thing digitally. Yep. And send that, and then maybe we can convert it. I will. Okay. I will keep you posted. Jonathan, if, I'm going to write, yes. I'm texting you right now. If, okay. if she already has it as a text file, then that would be perfect because you could just feed that right into an online translator. Hmm. Right. That As opposed to a PDF. I mean, a PDF is okay too because there are scanners that could read that. But if it's already in a text format, you can feed it right in directly. Right, that's preferable. Yes. Okay. So uh, that's that's all very very good. Uh, I'm guessing my answer from uh, Santiago is through Joe Manzo is it's less than a cent. <laughs> uh, if you're using the best MIDI tuning resolution that you can get, it's far less than a cent. I have a web page about that was it. the answer. The I wanted an answer to the question. Well, it's <laughs> I know that it's about one hundred and ninety six thousand and something per octave. So divide that by twelve, you get quite a bit. <laughs> Good <Okay>. enough. <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. I got the answer. I'm okay. <laughs> no. No, look, this has come up, um, Santiago, it's a math thing. We, we um, Let's say we take the 73rd harmonic and we compare it to the nearest spiral of fifth. 
right? And it turns out that while to my eye, based on integers, they're the same, they're not the same. So now we're trying to get the exact calculation. And the answer is less than a cent again. So it's a different reason, a different location, you know, completely different context. But it's this, it's intriguing to me, the math is, um, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, John, am I wrong to talk about the old 666 number is 665 fifths, and then the 666 pitch is almost identical to the original one, but it is numerically wrong, therefore that's the devil? Is that, is that where that story comes from? Any math historians? <laughs> Oh, well, it's more it's more than math. It's got to be like an ancient historian, somebody who knows where that 666 number comes from. And mm -hmm. according to Henry Lowengard, that is the reason. So, you know, I haven't played with the numbers enough to uh, for 666. Six, six. But right. I, I but it may be. Who knows? I mean, maybe I'm, some I'm ancient not a mathematician, so like I, you know. But it, uh, I, it is true that the 660 the the uh mark jones dubbed it the satanic comma as like yeah. a pun on syntonic comma that's very the, funny. the 665th uh you know r power of three basically or if you're doing a stack of fifths the 665th is a comma so if you go one more you're almost at the note where you started exactly it's very very close i mean it's some exactly. huge ratio Exactly, inexactly. It's not right. exact. No, it's math. Not, right. It's mathematically I just said that. very. I just right. said that. It's, it's exactly, inexactly. But what would be the right. beating if you put those two pitches against each other? So, how do you how, measure that? How, how long would it take to beat? Okay, Stephen, that's one way to look at it, right? Yeah. Another way, of course, the two ratios, you can't tell anything. But if I reduced it to cents, I know this sounds crazy, but if I reduce it to cents and then I go to a decimal far out, I should mathematically be able to, to subtract one from the other mm -hmm. and get an actual finite number, even, even if it does still, if it's still irrational and keeps going, even if that's true, I can still get at least this less than a cent answer. You know that uh, some kind of expression that's logarithmic that we can just say is we can paste it on a piece of paper i mean i'm hoping santiago what do you think uh, it, I, it's very interesting and i i think it also raises the question about continuum or discrete perception of reality of human Mm -hmm. because maybe there's a limit on, of that uh, continuum. So it's really a philosophical question, and, and maybe neuro, neuroscience would, could uh, resolve it sometime. But for, for us, I think uh, it's uh, pushing the boundaries of human perception and interpretation of reality is always uh, had us in in a good way. It's I think it's something that we could do, and with more people listening to to more precise tuning, maybe uh, we are humans develop a more precise perception, and with years evolution can do anything. No, so uh, it's very very interesting and goes to to philosophical and profound questions to me. Um, I mean, I just uh, have this, um, um, how can we pull, intuitive feeling that even if the outer ear listening can't tell, the, the intellectual mind really grasping that they're not the same and what the differences are is a value that does impart musically because you feel whole you feel in your gut the intuition's rewarded there's something about it and and and, and the last thing not to put too fine a, a twist on it this is what's going on between your ears in the sense of two hemispheres more than likely 
with one hemisphere holistic and one whole one more linear not to say it's like exact but that there these are modular uh, modes these are modes of approach that are different you know one of them is self-referring and the other one is it always perpetually in motion you know in, in a linear sense so and you know, that's between our ears so you know that's why i want to know what the truth is i want to know whether whether i can hear it or not feel it or not Maybe we feel things that we don't hear. With the, we perceive the sounds with the whole bone, the structure of our body. So it, the, it's possible that the resolution of our perception is tremendous. But it really, I don't know, it really, it's, I, I really don't have the answer. I don't know if you hear the sound, but now it has just won Argentina, the, the football cup. So uh, my sound will be somehow uh, noisy. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm getting this idea from Novaro. This is the idea that I feel it as opposed to I hear it. Yeah. And he said that about harmonics. And then the question is, yeah, of course. How, how high a harmonic is he referring to? Mm -hmm. Now, at yeah. that time, someone like, yeah. you know, someone like Henry Cowell, they were, you know, this is the same time period, they were postulating how people would react to higher harmonics in the sense that it hadn't happened yet and how long it would take for the higher harmonics to become internalized. So that's, you know, this is a Novaro issue, you know, whether your, your sense of it is so direct, independent of actually hearing it, which then means you could, and, and I didn't, I'm referring to Charles Ives actually, you can hear it in your head. It becomes so exact as a principle, as a paradigm in your head, that that becomes perfect listening, if you can do that. Not everyone can do that, but if if you're on that level, that you can actually hear in your head your own music that you've composed, that you know note for note, which he was, this idea of this a kind of a perfection overrides the fact, the facts of what we hear especially in a lifetime for him. He probably never heard anything to perfection, <laughs> but that, that's another story. Uh, are there any uh, thoughts or ideas before we're gonna be moving on shortly to the next session? I see Carol is here. I'm going to shut the uh, recording for a second.